By the time Custer woke the next morning, the butter had worn off. He was hungry again and felt weak. Storfell tiptoed quietly across the stone floor. Hush, he said, and motioned for Guster to come join him. Your family all look so tired. Why don't we let them sleep a little longer? A little longer. Picking himself up off the straw, he, he followed after Storfell. My younger brother is already out on the beach tending to business, he said, opening a wide door in the back without a, as much as a grunt. Dorfell scooped up one cow under each arm like they were a pair of kids. Wouldn't they rather walk, Guster said? He was amazed at Storfell's strength. Oh no, laughed Storfell. That's not part of good juggling. Curious, Guster Curious, Guster followed Storfell out through the field of clover and, and down a path to, gra to a grave to a gravelly beach where, um, where monstrous waves crashed upon the shore. Upon the shore. When he got there, Storfell set down the cow under his right arm next to another cow that was already there. Storfell, uh, Storfell took the cow under his left arm, slung it over his shoulders, and grabbed its legs gently on either side of its neck, as if it were a tiny calf. Doesn't that hurt? Asked Gaster. No, she likes it very much, said Storfell. With a grin as he as as the cow moved happily. Without another word, he took off jogging down the beach, high stepping like a football player at practice. The cow bounced up and down on her shoulders with each step, her head bobbing like a pendulum, her giant udder jostling back and forth like a balloon full of pudding. Guster had seen farmers carrying small pigs like that at the state fair, but never thought it was possible to run a full-grown cow down the beach with such ease as friendly giant hosts. It was downright astounding. 